Hey kids, we're so excited about today's Bridgewood Kids Experience. I know you are too. We've got our next gen team. Don't they look great right up here? Guys, how excited are you for what's about to take place? Pretty pumped. Yes, they can't contain it, neither can I. So here's what we got to do before we get going in this wild and crazy and fun journey called Bridgewood Kids. We need you to buckle up. Are you ready, team? Let's buckle up. Let's bring those seatbelts over and click. Now, here's what's in store. We've got all kinds of fun games. Do you like music? We have worship. We have interactive lessons. We're gonna have small group time. So much jam packed into this Bridgewood Kids experience. But before we have launch, we wanna hear you make your loudest noise. I know you can do it because you're kids. So on three, let's count them down. They're gonna make their loudest noise. And I think we're gonna be able to hear it from right here. Ready guys? Here we go. One, One two, two, three. three. Oh, I think they're ready, guys. That was pretty good. They are totally ready. All right, let's make it happen.
Ridgewood kids. Hey guys. Hey Jen. Thanks for joining us again this week. Did you guys have an awesome time celebrating Thanksgiving this past week with your family and friends? I want you to stop right now, turn to the person next to you, and tell them something that you're thankful for. We all have so much to be thankful for. Jen, you know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful that God gives us the opportunity to teach these awesome kids about Jesus every single week. I am really thankful for that too. Actually, I think this would be the perfect opportunity to look back on some of the awesome stuff that we've learned about together the last few weeks. You guys know what that means. It's epic, epic trivia, trivia time. time. That's right. So why do we do epic trivia time? Just hearing about God isn't enough. It's really important that you guys are taking the stories that we teach you, you're pulling out the main truth, and you're being able to apply those to your own lives. So are you guys ready to get started? After we read you the question, work together with your team to come up with the correct answer. It's important you listen to your whole team and be quiet. You don't want the other teams to hear your answer. Oh, and small group leaders, no helping. So way back in the book of Exodus, we learned about a man named Moses. God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Those were laws that God commanded that his people follow. Question number one, what was the first commandment God gave his people? A, do not kill. B, have no other gods before me, C, celebrate the Sabbath, or D, eat your vegetables. The answer is B. God wanted his people to love and honor him above anyone or anything else. This first commandment was very important. The Israelites had lived in Egypt for 400 years and the Egyptians worshiped many false gods, but these false gods couldn't save them from the plagues. 
They couldn't divide the Red Sea. They had no power. So how did the Israelites do? Number two, true or false? God's people stayed true to his first commandment. The answer is false. false. Right away, God's people disobeyed and built a golden calf to worship. The Israelite people did exactly what God had commanded them not to do. They gathered up their gold jewelry, they melted it down, and they formed it into an image of a calf that they could then worship. But even in their disobedience, God still showed grace to his people. That takes us to question three. True or false, the Israelites were completely dependent upon God while they were in the wilderness. The answer is true. true. Remember, God fed them by providing them manna each day, and he led them everywhere that they went. Isn't God so good? He provided food for the Israelites every single day. God also provided something else for them. Question number four. When the Israelites followed God through the wilderness, how did he lead them? A, as water, B, as lightning, C, as a storm, or D, as a cloud and fire? The answer is D. God led them as a pillar of cloud and fire through the wilderness. When the cloud moved, they moved. When the cloud stopped, they stopped. Remember the Israelites were God's chosen people. He had made a promise to them and he was going to keep it. He always provided them exactly what they needed. He showed them grace and mercy. God is enough. After many years of waiting, it was finally time for the Israelites to enter the Promised Land. Question number five, true or false? When the Israelites first arrived at the Promised Land, they could not wait to go inside. The answer is false. The Israelites were afraid at first of the giants who lived in the Promised Land, and they refused to go in. They allowed their fear to overweigh the promise that God had given them. Because they did not trust God, they wandered in the wilderness a really long time. They were wandering for more than 40 years. As they wandered, the older, unfaithful generation died. Eventually, God appointed a man named Joshua, who would lead the people into the Promised Land. Joshua was responsible for leading the army to the city of Jericho, and God had a plan for his people to overtake it. Jericho, a very strong city with a tall, strong wall all the way around it. Question number six. What was God's military strategy at Jericho? A, march around the walls, blow trumpets and yell. B, hide in the trees and ambush them. C, climb the walls and jump in, or D, Wait for the people of the new land to come to the Israelites. The answer is A. A. Only God could make the wall fall down and give the Israelites victory. The strategy depended on trust in God. All right, guys, you're more than halfway through. How are your teams doing? Great job, keep up the good work. Now, we're on to question number seven. When God's people repented, whom did God raise up to deliver them? A, judges, B, juries, C, lawyers, or D, presidents? The answer is A. A. God raised up many unlikely people as judges to deliver his people from their enemies. Two of those judges that we taught you guys about were named Deborah and Ehud. God doesn't make any mistakes when he creates us. 
He made us all unique with unique traits that can be used for Him. We see this in the story of Ehud. Question number eight. What about Ehud was different from most people? A, he was blind. B, he only had one leg. C, he ate only bananas. Or D, he was left-handed. The answer is D. D. Ehud was left-handed and the enemy king did not expect this when Ehud attacked him. God used Ehud to deliver his people from the rule of the king who mistreated them. The next judge we learned about was named Deborah. Deborah was a prophet, which means she heard God speak and she shared that word with God's people. One day, Deborah called a man named Barak to come and talk with her. God had big plans for Barak. God commanded Barak to take an army and to go to Mount Tabar to battle with King Jabin. Number nine, true or false? Barak was willing to lead the fight against Sisera's army all by himself. The answer is false. Barak was nervous. Barak went to Deborah and asked her to go with him. Deborah knew that God was with them because he had asked Barak to lead the battle, but she agreed to go with him. Barak felt afraid, even though God promised to be with him. And if you guys remember, God was with Barak. God gave Barak and Deborah the victory in their battle against Sisera and his army. Our next question is about another battle we learned about. The battle was fought by Gideon and his army. Question number 10. True or false? God wanted Gideon to get rid of tens of thousands of fighting men, leaving just 300 so everyone would know that God is worthy because he won the victory. The answer is true. true. God is the only one worthy of worship. So, how did you guys do? These last two months, we've learned that God is enough, God gives grace, God is faithful, God delivers, God is with us, and God is worthy. I'm so thankful for our time together. Thank you for being here with us and giving us the opportunity to share God's word with you. Let's pray and thank God for who he is. Dear Lord, thank you for these kids that showed up today, God, to learn more about you. Thank you for the truths that you've taught us over these past seven weeks together. I pray that the kids would take them and that they would be able to implement them in their own lives, Lord. That they would know that you are with them, God, that you are faithful, that you love them and you care about them. I pray that you'd go with us and you'd give us safety throughout this week. I pray that each one of the children here would just shine their light for you this week in school, or whoever they come in contact with, Lord. Go with us now. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's not there. Should you like a music video of you being like, Quail. <laughs> Quail, quail. Quail, right? Wow. I'm just like pronouncing it different ways. Is that what we're doing? Okay. YMCA. Is that a, are you, which, right. which member of the village people are you? <laughs> this is Hazard. really like a tongue twister. Hazard? 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 I think next week I'm going to put Hazard. in like... To Americanize it, you would say Hazard. Hazard? I'm going to say Hazard. I think is what it is. You got Let's it, girl. Try again. Jamie. Jabin, King Canaan, of Canaan, Hazor, Hazor, reigned in Hazor. You say it how you want, girl. <clears throat> Joel, we must do it again. We're going to be, no! we're going to perfect this. Great, you're doing great. And if you guys remember, God was with Barak. God gave Barak and Deborah the victory in the battle. Sorry, I itched my face. <laughs>
squeeze in All my dreams come alive Life is for living With you I've made my decision You lift me up Fill my eyes with wonder For every young in your love This freedom's untainted With you No moment is wasted Love is an ocean, you can drown me The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste the sea I'm under grace, the place to be It means I'll never need an umbrella I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather Whether or never I ever Understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans I stand with faith there in the life I never known to touch And still I stop my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end, this is living The life I've been given is a gift If I'm a living, I'm a living to death So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end, this is living The life I've been given is a gift If I'm a living, I'm a living to death Hey kids, this has been so exciting hanging out with you today. Have y'all guys had fun? Had fun. Yeah. Yes. And so before we go, we want to let you know what our mission statement is. It's what defines us here at Bridgewood Kids. Here it is. We want to be kids so close to Christ that everyone in the world will know him. Take care, kids. See you next time.